Zach's Screen of the Week, an overview of a timely stock screening strategy aimed at helping you produce more profitable investing results. This week we're talking about something mystical, magic numbers and relative valuations. Kevin Matris, top stock screener here at Zach's and head of our research wizard department. I'm sure you could gather by now has put this together. You don't think I'd write something mystical. like this. <laughs> magic numbers. Yeah. Tell me something. Were you over to see the new Harry Potter film yet? <laughs> no, I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how long that kid's going to stay in that school. Was he going for a PhD <laughs> or what? <laughs> right, the college years, <laughs> the senior living. Nice. Is there is there such a thing as magic numbers and relative valuation? Uh, if only there was. Um, you know, the, the reason why I wrote this piece is because so many people I speak to seem to believe that there are these magic numbers when it comes to equating stock picking success. Mm -hmm. And the thing that, that I hear over and over again is people believe that, uh, that companies with P.E. ratios of less than 20 is somehow a magic number, mm -hmm. or companies with a, with a price to book value of less than one is somehow a magic number. And the fact of the matter is that statistics simply just prove otherwise. All right. so, and tell us how. Well, uh, I actually ran this piece, I think it was back in 2008, and I was using 2007's numbers for my statistics. Uh, but today I'm also updating it with 2008 numbers, um, and uh, it's very interesting. So let me see if I can give you some mind-numbing stats. Okay. All right. First off, looking at the best performing stocks for 2007, mm -hmm. and here's how we qualified it. We were looking at stocks that were trading at $5 or higher at the beginning of the year. Uh, they had to trade on average of 50,000 shares or more. Uh, and we wanted to see companies that have increased in price by 50% or greater for that year. Okay. That's how we qualified the best stocks for 07. What's interesting is that only 47% of those stocks started with P.E. ratios of under 20, while uh, the other 53% were over 20. Now, this may or may not sound like a big deal, but what's interesting is that if you had only focused on those stocks that were under 20, you would have kept more than half of those stocks off of your radar screen, and that is a big deal. The other thing that's interesting is that even if you did look at stocks, because there were stocks under 20, even if those were the only ones that you focused on, what's more interesting is that 21% of those companies had PEs of under 20 by the end of the year. So you had a, a decent amount of companies under 20 at the beginning, but if you continue to screen for these companies that had PEs of under 20, you would have gotten kicked out of a lot of those stocks as they were making the biggest portion of their move. And what about the price to book value? You know, it's really the same thing. If you were to look at the price to book, check this out. The median price to book value uh, at the beginning of the year was 3.07, and by the end of the period, it mm -hmm. was 4.32. So percentage-wise, only 1% of the stocks had price-to-book values of less than 1 at the start, which means using the magic number of 1 for PB would have excluded nearly every top performer in 2007. And what about 2008? Did it come out the same? You know, 2008, it was interesting. So I, I tried to put together the same kind of study using the same parameters. And what was interesting is that I only was able to come up with 15 companies that qualified the screen because there just weren't a lot of companies that increased in value by 50% or more. So I had to change it a bit. And what I did was I opened up the screen to, uh, to simply find the top 50 performing companies in 2008. Now, the numbers weren't as lopsided, but they still illustrated the same thing. So I check see. this out. Yep. In 2008, 35% of the top performing companies started with PEs over the magic number of 20, and by the end, 49% were over 20. Okay. When you look at the price to book ratio, 10% were under 1 at the start, with only 2% under 1 by the end. So once again, if you only focused on those companies with those low valuations, these magic numbers, right, mm -hmm. right. you would have missed a lot of great stocks. Okay. I believe that if you are truly determined to try to find these value stocks, these valuation plays, I think the best way to do it 
is to be able to compare those valuations to the averages for their industry, and here's why. In 2007, 67% mm -hmm. of the stocks on that list of winners had PEs under the average for their industry, and over 74% had price to book values under the average for their industry, mm -hmm. meaning the majority of the best companies would have made it through a relative valuation screen, giving you a chance to get in. And in 2008, it was virtually the same thing. 63% had PEs under the average for their industry, and 71% had price to book values under the average for their industry. Once again, meaning the majority of those stocks would have qualified and you would have had a chance to get in there. So I believe looking at low valuations on a relative basis is really the best way to go. All right, quickly the parameters for this week. All right, check out this week's screen. First, we're starting off with PE, and we want the PE to simply be less than or equals to the average for its industry. Second, price to book value, less than or equals to the average for its industry. Okay. But what's interesting is that we also want the projected one-year growth rate to be greater than the average for its industry. Mm -hmm. And we are applying all of these stats to companies with a Zacks rank of less than or equals to two. All right. And how many stocks came through, by the way? Uh, I think there was like maybe 55 or 60, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Here's five of them. Uh, again, a very diverse set of, uh, of stocks, very diverse set of industries, but you had British American Tobacco, Mirant Corp, Collective Brands, Penn Virginia, and ResMed. And what's interesting is that all of these companies, of course, have valuations less than the average for their industry. But I believe that if you continue to focus on companies with growth rates above their industry, but with valuations below their industry, I think these are excellent companies to put on your radar screen and great candidates to consider. All right. If you want to check out the other stocks that came through the screen that Kevin did not mention, get over to Zacks.com's homepage, scroll down that homepage until you get to Kevin's picture and the headline right next to it. Click on it. It'll take you right to this week's screen, and you can check out those other stocks that he did not mention. If you want to check out more about the research, wizard the tool that he uses to achieve these screens go to zax.com forward slash research wizard with kevin matris and the screen of the week magic numbers i'm terry ruffalo